uh, you know, we think we're going to where they tell us, and it's actually a couple miles. Yeah. 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 Yes, we're away every day. Again, it's not my problem of uh, being tall. Um, you know, we got out of So we cannot transport any passengers. Um, so make sure you keep yourself safe. There's a lot of things that are going to be out of each other. Uh, try to get us out, but let us um, You guys see that track that's on that? So if this gets off centered, it doesn't sit right. Or if you're short like me and can't pick it all the way up and make it level, then it's not going to sit on there right, and the paint and it's not going to lock in. If it's on there correctly, we can literally let it go, and the patient can be on you know on it and, and it's fine. But it's got to get in that groove and sit in there properly. Um, so sheets. Um, clothing that we've cut that's hanging down can get into that and kind of keep it from being able to go forward. Um, and it's made for speed, not comfort. Um, they, everybody complains because it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a, a purple mattress. It's, it's not as comfortable. And it's got multiple seat belts on it. They have to have those seat belts on. They have to have the shoulder straps on. It is an FA requirement. So we're coming out here to load. Uh, this thing is full. Cool. Right about where Caleb's standing is literally the absolute furthest that you need to be back that direction. All of our business is kind of up this way. You might see us get into this little side compartment. Our blood products are in there. Um, but um, that will be the furthest that you will see us get back there either. Um, items do shift in flight sometimes, so we never get past where about where he is. And then when you're you know coming in. Kind of coming in from this angle where Eric can see you and give you the thumbs up or maybe even the side here where he can still see because he's looking for us. He's going to, like I said, he can manipulate the blades a little bit in our favor um, if he sees the way we're coming in. As you see, slopes are very imperative, right? So if we were on a slope like this, these blades are even that much lower. Are you tall guys? You know, like I said, you can reach up there and touch them. Like I said, I'm going to try to make it as safe as possible for you. The blades droop depending on RPM. So they're at their lowest droop right now as we start up. 
they'll get a little bit higher and higher the faster the blades turn due to centrifugal force. So they'll, they'll get more and more rigid outward. And so you'll see actually they pick up just a little bit, they have a little more clearance. Uh, if there's wind or something, that, that can make the blades bounce a little bit, or flap. And so that could momentarily adjust, like change or reduce your clearance. So for that reason, don't take for granted the amount of clearance that you see that you have at any given point. Uh, assume that you're, you're not always going to have that. Walk in a crouch a little bit, you know, you don't have to crawl necessarily, but you know, just walk, put your head down a little bit and give yourself a little bit extra room. Hats off. You Light. Know, glasses, if you got them up on your head, you know, we're going to blow all that stuff off. Yes, yeah. any loo loose articles, uh, really be cautious of, of baseball caps or any kind of hat that could blow away. And if it goes, let it go. Like in other words, if the wind, especially if it goes towards the tail rotor, don't instinctively, you know, check yourself, don't run for it. There has been, there have been people killed literally by, for chasing a hat that, I don't know, but specific story where the guy chased his hat, it blew into the tail rotor, he wasn't thinking, he reached for it. And that tail rotor goes at such a high RPM, it's a blur. It's almost invisible depending on the lighting. It's a really important thing. You police yourself as far as uh, loose articles before you approach the aircraft and, and um, don't just instinctively chase it unless you can you know, know that where you're going. things to take into consideration I don't know how much you've already talked about like uh, surface and stuff yeah. but like like dust if it's really dry it's been, been real dry or something now there could be a lot of dust that we pick up I, I'm thinking of one that I don't remember where it was but uh, it was a road and the one that's on the road there was tall wires on one side and tall trees on the other it was tight you know but I thought I thought okay we can get in there but as we were just above treetop height my downwash which is something to think about is, is our downwash is pretty powerful and my downwash started to kick up a, a whole lot a big cloud of dirt from a, like a, a gravel or dirt parking lot that was adjacent to the road right there and it was such a tall cloud like it was almost to the heights of the top of the power lines that's that's how much you know circulating of the of the air was going on that it was picking up a cloud that i was going to descend into that cloud of dust and perhaps not had visibility what we call a brown out, you know. And so my engine's now ingesting all that dirt and that's not good for the engine and so but so long story short, you know, I, I I waved off that one and we did we actually did go to a church parking lot that was a mile up the road from there and uh, so that's that's pretty common. Yeah, you know, landing on snow is fine, but we will blow it up if it's not powered up. And you got to think about too is this when it's sitting here running it's, it's kind of vibrating so if it's a real muddy field we're digging into that mud and if it's if it's snow or ice we're going to be literally moving you know as as we're because it's you know it's um, um, like it's sitting there vibrating so if it's a real muddy field um just take that into mind too because these skids will dig in and then when we take off if one skid breaks free and the other one doesn't that could cause us to, to go over all if there's an alternate somewhere, a charge, a school somewhere down the road that we can choose, then uh, ideally that is that is better in those situations. Too. And if you do see that it is a dirt, dusty area, you could if the fire department got a you know a, a truck there that can hose down the uh, the LZ, that'd actually be helpful to kind of lay down the dirt and keep us from creating such a big cloud. Might be helpful. Lay it on an outfield once, a baseball outfield, and that was. The only reason I completed that one was because my cloud of dirt, there was enough wind that day, the cloud of dust was being blown away from me across the entire infield. It was coating the bleachers with, with brown, you know, brown dirt. But anyway, so it could, it could, be, it could be massive in the cloud.
has a time to walk it, it's ideal. Um, for Even a, a football field. Yeah. I come out here earlier to make sure it's like a football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yep. Yeah. We'll All those are projectile objects, too. We're going we're gonna to blow that stuff. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit anyone that's, that's anywhere in the near vicinity of it, for sure. Um, it's going to run. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, most of the time I don't see a whole lot of running, but I have had a handful of if times. If I am running, when somebody, it is yeah, away from this thing. When somebody, I have seen, there have been a couple scenes where it's been on, and I can think of specifically where a first responder, I don't know if he, like, who he was or what, but somebody came running. Like they just, they, they get excited, I guess, adrenaline and the noise of the helicopter, you know, it's pretty exciting. But, you know, so somebody got excited and they start running across the field and all by himself. My crew can't do anything because they're behind with the patient approaching in a big group, the helicopter, and then this guy runs ahead and he can't hear the crew probably trying to shout and stop him. I can't, I don't have a horn to blow or anything like that. I, I could maybe flash my lights or try to get his attention, but it's, it's, you, you, there's a lot of visual, you gotta really be visual with the helicopter. There's a lot of visual, you know, because you can't hear a whole lot, it's loud. Um, you gotta really be paying attention and look, I know the glare on the windscreen might make it hard to see the pilot. If I, if I can kind of tell, like at night, for example, my, th I'll give you a thumbs up. I'll have my little map light on inside the cabin and so you can maybe see me, but I also realize that there could be glare on the outside. So I always do a thumbs up and I give you like two flashes of my landing light. That way, oh, if that's an external, that's a, it's like a headlight out here. Um, that way you have. A visual again you know of, of my, i'm saying yes you can, you can go ahead and cross into my my, my rotor disc if that's turning also too you know when it comes to the lz's it's not uncommon or he, he's going to try to position us to where this door is going to be the closest to the patient so that we don't have to walk around the tail of the aircraft and and you know and you know get as close to the tail so it might be that we come in and actually turn a complete 180 degrees before they sit down. And the winds do play a factor in that too. Um, so it also too, when we're lifting off, we might do that too, turn a whole 180 degrees. So that's where those stop signs and those bushes and that kind of stuff, like we, we like to have that little extra cushion to have that room to be able to go side to side if we need to, or front to back or be able to make that turn without worrying about the tail hitting. We also do, you know, hospital transfers from XYZ hospital to bigger hospital somewhere else. So, um, and then the scenes on top of that. So uh, we've got everything in here that we need to take care of them, um, but we are just in a much smaller space. We always have someone sitting at the head of the patient in case we need to get an airway in, in the air. Um, then, then one of us is sitting on the right side, and of course, pilot. That's that's our, our three crew members. So, um, so like I said, space is, is, a, is a luxury. Sometimes it gets a little tight in there. That you know, red bag is sitting in, in our third rider seat. So that would be the seat that we would put a, a family member in if we had a family member. If there, we, we don't have four on board, then we we just need to keep the bag in there. That thing weighs like 32 pounds. It's, it's heavy. I said we could do pretty much anything that we need to do between here and the and Little Rock the Trauma Center um, to get on there. Um, coding a patient is is not ideal, um, just simply because of the limited space. So if we get on scene and your patient's coded, maybe they weren't coded when you called us and they're coded now, we may say, hey guys, let's just team up and, and go by ground, and the pilot will come pick us up. So it might be the best best in that scenario. But yeah, we can pretty much do whatever we need to do. A lot of times we'll do it in the ambulance because we got more room and more um, hands to help, but um, and then bring the patient out here and, and, and head on. But ideally, we want to try to get out as soon as possible. What questions do you guys have? But yes, we can fit a Lucas um, and um, and bring it back to you. <laughs> Good rule of thumb, basically, yeah. is when you're setting up the LZ, once they land, there's actually no reason why you should even go up there. They'll, they'll come to you. Once you see them coming to you, then you know it's you're, you're pretty well going to be safe then. But other than that, but well, they're going to bring their stuff. Wherever the patient's at, they're going to come there. And then, if you're helping transport the patient back, you're going to be with them nine times out of ten.
Yeah, I would, I would say almost. You're with them. Yeah, I'd yeah, say 100 percent of the time, there's yeah. no reason you should be entering the rudder just without a crew member. Yeah. That's that's just for everybody's safety. Yeah. You know, once we have eyes on the landing zone, like we know, okay, that's where we need to land. Clear out of the area where we're going to be. Uh, sometimes somebody standing in the middle of the LZ waving their arms is helpful. Um, or flashlight at night or hands during the day that could be helpful while we're orbiting just for us to spot it but once we've spotted it and you see we're turning and we come to find or we say something over the radio that we're, we're landing get out of the LZ completely get well clear because we don't need that's uh, not like an airport where we have somebody you know doing the marshalling hand signal we don't need we don't have to have those or anything in fact, it's 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 safer if you don't if you just if you back up because we're.